Hey, what's going on, everybody? MC Andrew Love back on your screen and your speakers one more time. And welcome to another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I speak with a brother out of Virginia. Man, this brother can sing. His name, Adam. Check out this interview we did right now. What's going on, everybody? MC Andrew Love back on your screen and your speakers one more time with another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I'm speaking to a brother out of Virginia. Oh, man, his vocal chops are mind-blowing, man. This brother can sing for real, man. And everything he does, oh, my God, it's magic, man. I'm telling you, I can't wait for you to meet him. So without further ado, let me bring in Adam. Thank you, sir. Yes, man. How are you doing? What have you been up to? Man, it's it's been a good day. It's relaxing. Uh, just you know, just just living life, man, and just enjoying enjoying every day. Yeah, I can say you're living life, man. I've been watching your career so far, and let me just tell you something, man. Your vocal skills are like mind blowing to me. Like you have a sound. That kind of reminds me of some old school. Back when I was growing up and I heard this guy named hmm, John B. Does that name ring a bell? I yes, sure hope so, because you have a sound that kind of reminds me of him. And I love that man. That guy can sing his butt off. And you, mm -hmm. well, you're the same way, man. You can sing your butt off. So tell me, when did you realize you had a passion for music? Well, it's kind of long but i'll keep the short of it like ever since i was younger it's kind of something that i even at the time when i was like two or three years old you know four i've always liked i, I never realized what performing was i just knew i like to get in front of people and things like that more so in elementary school little talent shows dancing and stuff like that and then just kind of going forward more so when i was in high school just kind of keep it brief uh I really, I got into it more so because, you know, behind the music, which was on VH1 a lot back in, uh, back in the day, they would do reruns and stuff. I got into it because more so because of Bobby Brown and because of Bobby Brown, it gave into his history with like new edition and things like that. And then, you know, because of Bobby Brown, I got into, you know, in, you know, I, I found out more about different, uh, different artists from the R and B genre back then that were popular new Jack swing time. And that's what really made me want to be an artist and want to do this as a career. So really, that sort of like sort of opened up my full passion to want to do it. And then that's kind of like where it sort of started. Well, I'm thankful that you did watch that show because you, my friend, have a vocal range that is can really speak to people like you have a way of emitting your voice that makes men like myself want to just cry, man. I don't know how you do it, but you do it. And your, and your vocal arrangement is that damn cool, man. You're really, really polished, man. It's like you've been singing for the last 70 years, man. That's just how I feel. <laughs> Who are your greatest influences? Music, man, it's, it's a lot. I mean, but to kind of start off at the top, you gotta obviously gotta gotta throw Michael Jackson in there, of course, like most 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 uh R and B artists. Uh, obviously, I just said Bobby Brown, Tevin Campbell, John B., Kenny Lattimore, uh, a little bit of, I'm trying to think, Life Jennings a little bit. I'm just trying to think of who else, Prince a little bit. And uh, and I'm trying to think of uh, who else, Babyface, of course. So just kind of throwing in some of the some of the heavy hitters that I'm uh, that have inspired me uh, to want to do this and seeing them really do their thing from back in the day and watching old videos and, you know, music videos and things like that, that just really inspired me. So just singing, you know, singing to their music and trying to match their pitch as close as possible. is really was like the best teacher as far as who my biggest influences are. So yeah, those would be it. Well, you dang sure mentioned some heavy hitters, man. Everybody you mentioned were people I used to listen to growing up in my day. Those guys really knew how to give you something to think about when they made music. And what I miss about music from the 80s and the 90s is the feelings that went behind each lyric. When you did approach a lyric as an artist, you want to bring the feeling 
Like you think about where you would be at at that time you're making a song and you would bring that song to life with your emotions. I don't hear that today in this music until I heard you. And then a couple of other cats that I've interviewed on this platform that give me that same vibe. And I'm, I'm really digging it, man. When you're not in the studio making music, what do you do? When it comes to that, you know, I, I try to, you know, I double and dabble in a lot of other things. I like to, you know, exercise and just, you know, keep my body right. You know, try to eat, try to eat healthy. I cook a little bit on the side. It's fun. Uh, I like to, you know, watch, you know, old sitcoms and stuff. Something I do and occasionally sit down to play some games. So <laughs> I'm really kind of like, I kind of like, you know, it's funny. If anything, I, I like to, if it's really up to me, it's mostly like kind of be like, in the studio or want to just kick back and really just sit down and just kind of just chill out, not really do anything, uh, really just relax. I mean, I'm more, I'm not the type of person that really likes to go to like big parties and stuff like that. But, you know, of course, if I go, I, I do enjoy myself. It's just, that's sort of the stuff when I'm not kind of recording or, or everything. But if it was up to me personally, I would love to be in the studio 24 seven if I could. So, I mean, just to really keep cutting music with people and working with other people. That's my biggest thing. You said you play games. Are you an Xbox guy or a PlayStation? Well, guy? well, I'm actually, believe it or not, I'm more of a. I like. I have the new stuff. I mean, I have a PlayStation Five over there, but I'm mostly a. Most play a lot of retro games. You know, like I, I keep all my older systems. You know, Super Nintendo, and you know, I play Genesis stuff and things like that. So, I mean, I'll because the thing is, is that I believe a lot of games back in the day obviously had a lot more. They were a lot more challenging, so I never like to, you know, uh, you know, put, you know, I always like to make sure I keep my skills in check, even though I'm like 28 years old, believe it or not. I always, uh, you know, I'll pop in because also those older games, I just beat Links to the Past recently, those games, like, they don't take that that long. And a lot of the newer games, they'll take, you have to actually sit down and invest your time to, to, to you know, beat them. Sometimes they'll take like 20, 30 hours. Sometimes I don't have this sort of time to do that. So I'll go play older stuff because it's quicker yeah older so, yeah. stuff is quicker so you're like a super <laughs> mario type of guy yeah yeah sonic the hedgehog super mario brothers mega man things like that oh man <laughs> if you ever find yourself on the xbox and you think you feeling good about playing nba 2k 21 okay then tap into me at mc andrew I'm, love on xbox man i'm there listen dude. i'm more out I'm all about I'm all about basketball, man. I, I, I'm more so recently, but you know, basketball. I that's if I was gonna play any sports games, it'd be definitely the definitely basketball. So I mean, I played one of the NBA games. I can't remember which which one, but uh, they're fun. They're definitely fun. Let's talk about your song, your new song, "If I Lost My Girl." You just recently released yeah. the song to the public, and uh, <laughs> can you tell us more about it and feed us into the song? Well. Just to kind of, before I go deep into the song, particularly just like all my music, you know, I, I, like I said, I kind of felt like the way R&B or just music in general doesn't have to be just R&B. I kind of felt it was missing some of that, you know, like you said, some of the passion in there with the lyrics and, you know, the real emotion behind it and actually caring about, the you know, the, you know, the stuff that you're putting out, not sounding like everybody else, kind of picking from your influences, but being you in your music. So I felt like, just like my other songs, I like still believe in forever and let me know what's up. This particular song, I kind of wanted to keep R&B at the core of what it is. You know, like back then, when you just even like listen to just two other random examples, like Marvin Gaye and Teddy Pendergrass, you can feel what they're saying in the music and uh, to keep it to the root of the song. But that that was kind of sort of the meaning behind the song. You know what I mean? So it's just the because you can say the character what R&B is. Um, but um, is there anything you want me to expound on the song? Just the heart of the of of the song itself. I wanted to keep it as authentic as possible, with just like my other material that I've put out. Um, you know, the the past like year and some change. Uh, just really the that's sort of like the you know the kind of the structure I follow with most of my music. Just it, it speaks to me because you know eighties and nineties R and B is kind of sort of where I kind of piggyback a lot of my stuff, and even up to the early two thousands, like oh five. Just kind of keep it in that sort of organic feeling music not like it sounds because I, I want the point i'm trying to make is the songs that i put out like this one i wanted to be able to be enjoyed by people that are not just from this generation but people in generations that are after you know like 20 years from down the line when i'm like 40 48 years old 
I want people to be able to go back and listen to this music and not know it was just data from the time it came out. So that's sort of how I, just like the guy who writes my music, I always want to give him a shout out to Iquan. I always tell him that I want to make classic music. So, so that. Oh, Dexquan Julius writes your music. I love yeah. that man. Yes. I love that man. I love <laughs> that man. Shout out. Kudos go to Dexquan Julius. He's number one on my list this week. So tomorrow, oh, okay, man, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, man. Daquan Julius is that dude, man. I saw him yep. on your credits, man. I was looking in your Spotify, and I was looking at the credits. No, I was on title, and I typed in Daquan Julius, and you're like, check out his songs. And I saw your name, Adam, and I'm like, oh, crap. I'm going to interview Adam tonight. And then I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> Daquan Julius and Adam, go figure. They're in the same conversation i gotta have both of y'all on at the same time man this is be a dope interview hey he he would he would be more like especially if you hit him up i'm sure he would be especially when it comes to this sort of thing he'll be more inclined to, to jump on especially when it comes to benefiting him as well so it'll be kind of like a wonderful like it'd be fun it would be a fun interview yes i had him on my show and i was like now that I know you guys are working together, oh my God, I got to have him back. And I got to have you back because you guys are working hand in hand. You're singing his creations. You both yes. have a beautiful sounding voice. Both of you guys sound <laughs> great. I, oh my God. I don't know what else to say, man. But I'm just like so stoked right now. I'm like floored. Really, really floored to hear you say Daquan Julius, man. It is such an amazing experience meeting that guy. He's he's just so different. He's different. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you have this voice that goes well with his writing style. You know, I'm just I'm I'm like proud of you, man. I'm proud of you for going out there and, and just going for your dreams, man. Just going for it and say, F it. I'm going to go before it. And I'm going to work with somebody who I know is just as dope as I am. And you are. That's freaking dope, man. <laughs> That's freaking dope. Oh, so, man. yeah. So can you, without further, you know, folks, you too could tap in, man. You don't, I don't have to be the only one excited. You could be excited too. You, you could tap into Adam, man. Adam's got a voice that will knock your socks off. And the fact that he's working with Daquan Julius makes his voice just that much dangerous because Daquan Julius writing skills are bar none better than I've ever heard other artists. I mean, you got Michael Jackson here, Babyface and everything else. But as of today, right now, Daquan Julius is the shiznit. And so is Adam. He is the shiznit as well, man. So without further ado, folks, I'm going to play a snippet of his new song. If I Lost My Girl, written by Daquan Julius. So check this out. This is dope, man. <laughs> Yo, this is Adam, man. This is Adam right here. Yo, you got to tap in, folks. This is Adam. Oh, my God. Yo, if you want to hear the rest of the song, you know what you got to do. You got to go to Spotify. You got to go to Apple Music. You got to go to YouTube, YouTube Music, Deezer, Pandora, and my favorite spot, iHeartRadio. And whatever they're streaming going on, Adam is in the middle of it. Tell us some of your experiences you've had since you've been creating music. Right. So when it comes to experiences, uh, I've been very fortunate to meet some of my influences in the game. I have met Tevin Campbell, luckily. I have met John B. a few times you know, Brandy, but it's not because some of these were meet and greets, of course, but, you know, obviously I had to take an opportunity because as an artist, you got to appreciate the people that have done these things. So I go make sure I make time to do that. You know, obviously the wedding, singing at the wedding, uh, paid gig here or there, but I'm trying to make that more consistent, of course. Um, and, you know, obviously as every artist will tell you, you, you got to go through some of the hurdles with some of the, you know, business, of course, got to deal with the people that talk a lot, you know, scam artists and things like that of that nature um and it's just as as every artist goes through these things there's also the good and the bad of everything like that so i mean real realistically has been a rewarding experience obviously meeting Daquan through this whole thing 
has been awesome. So I think that, and the producers that have met through him and the connections that I'm going to be meeting further in the, in the, you know, as I progress doing this music thing. So I think overall, I've been very pleasantly happy uh, and surprised with, uh, with everything that I've kind of done so far. I'm pleasantly surprised with everything you have done so far, Adam. It's not just you, brother. It is a pandemic right now going on about your voice and your musical ability <laughs> and the way you interpret a lyric. Come on. Everybody who hears Adam has got to be digging the vibes. I'm digging the vibes. Y'all should be digging the vibes. Because Adam, yeah, as I said earlier, he is the shiznit. Do you have any advice for the youngins that are coming up that want to do what you're doing? Yes. Uh, most important thing is that just kind of stay to who you are as an artist and try to no matter what anybody says if they think that you're garbage or they think that you're crap just keep working at your craft keep learning keep keep listening to yourself if you're a rapper make sure you know you come through with the bars and keep learning how to to, to put things together um don't follow don't follow the trends set the trends try to just you know find find the beats and the styles that fit you and stick with it. Because I feel like a lot of these younger, younger dudes in the industry that are, that are younger than me, or they're my age and they're starting to want to do music now and everything like that. A lot of them kind of fall victim to trying to follow what's hot. And I think the thing is ever since I started doing music about 10, almost 10 years ago is that I've stuck with the type of R&B I've wanted to make for the last, you know, keep doing it. I wasn't really putting out material back then, but I'm saying I've been working on myself for the last you know, 10 years for this thing, pretty much. And I stuck to the R&B that I know will, will be what it is. So, um, and I feel like a lot of these younger dudes need to understand that you got to stick to what you do. Because if you think about it at the end of the day, eventually what you're doing will be the trend. And even afterwards, you can want to stick with this, the, the R&B that you're doing. Because again, or whatever you're doing, because at the end of the day, that's you. That's your style. And if you pop off with your style of music, that just is a, a, a like I could say, it's like ice cream. It's like a cherry on top of what you did. It's just an extra incentive to say, like, you made a million dollars off one of your songs because that's the trend at the moment. And that's what I would give advice for the younger generation. And you could take it or leave it, but I'm saying, like, that's the sort of thing that a lot of these young dudes just don't, they don't, they won't, they won't listen. And a few of the seeds will pick it up. But Snoop Dogg said of the best, you got to be original, be you. That's what really ultimately what it is. Do you have a process in writing music? My process, if, um, you know, it's, it's funny because I come hand in hand with my writer, specifically Daquan. And when it comes to music, it's kind of a dual effort. It's not that I just go to a writer and I tell him to write what I want. But basically, I know what r and I like and I know what I, what I want to have sound. So sometimes just kind of like James Brown, he didn't really know how to play instruments until later. He had things constantly kind of go in his head. And in my head, I have the sound and the instrumentations that I want kind of built around what I want. And then I'll hear it and I'll kind of have, I, I, I'm more of an idea guy. So I'll get the ideas of what I want, kind of lay down what I want. And I'll, the idea of the event that I'm trying to convey in a song. And then I'll call up someone like Daekwon to help me flesh out my idea fully so it's kind of like it's a team effort and that's another thing for anybody that's trying to get in the music game even if you're not a skilled songwriter you can your goal is to do the work in terms of the legwork in terms of having the idea and once you have the idea you know find the influences that musicians that influence you and kind of take that and sort of like get someone to kind of work around your ideas and stuff like that so that's sort of the creative process or i'll think of a, co a great chorus and I'll have someone like Doc Juan help me flesh it out into something I truly believe would be a great piece of music. So it's a hand-in-hand it's -hand thing. You can't just say, hey, I want you to write me a great R&B record. It doesn't work like that. Or a great pop record or whatever. You need to have the things like you need the, let me say, it's like a cake, right? You crack open the ingredients in the cake. You need to put the ingredients in there. But it's like the idea, okay, the recipe, you have the recipe but he can help you get the ingredients, extra ingredients, but you know what I mean. It's kind of makes it together into something great. You can't just think of it. Oh, I want to do this. And that's it. You have to really develop it. But sometimes it, and it depends. It varies. It can be quick. It can be, you know, it can take time. Like it just depends on, depends on it. And the more you're actively doing it, 
it's a weird thing to act, you know, practice doing it, the easier it is to come up with stuff. So that's sort of the process I do. I'm digging the vibes, man. I am. Do you have any burning desires? Yes. Uh, it's, it's, it kind of goes back to, to just music in general. I, I really want to do this as my career is my burning desire is to really just have it to where my music is heard by literally not only the top dogs, everybody can hear it. And so like just continue to record music and leave a lasting legacy of what I'm doing. So when I'm gone and I'm up in heaven or wherever that may be, people will still be able to hear it. And my burning desire is for people to just hear the music that is being put out now just on a bigger scale for me to be able to hit those BT awards and things like that to show people that no matter how many times people said that you couldn't do it, that I could, and they can see that I did it and just really be able to get myself on a, on a bigger level than, you know, on the smaller scale thing. So my biggest desire is just to really be able to have music that will last forever. And then people will be able to see what I was able to do and be able to, hopefully they'll be able to achieve the same level of success. And that's really what, my biggest desire is just to stick with music and hopefully it will take me to where it can, you know, take me all the way up there. You keep singing the way you're singing, my brother, and you are going to get to where you want to go. America in the world. It is I, MC Andrew Love. This is Let's Chat and Jam. This is my special guest, Adam. This brother been singing for about 10 years now and he's still doing it. And now he's coming out with his music because he felt like it's time for him to show you just who he is as an artist, and I'm telling you, I'm thankful for Adam for putting out his music and bearing his soul for the public because he is an amazing artist. Not only that, he's an amazing guy. He's the type of guy that you can chill with. He's the type of guy that you want to tap into. Adam has music for everybody. So let's just say that you're the type of person that loves to talk about your lady because you in love with your woman. Well, Adam's got you. And of course, if you're the type of guy that wants, <laughs> and if, you, if you're the type of guy or girl that just likes to talk about your life in general, well, don't worry. Adam has got you. Whatever song you have in mind, whatever your feelings are, Adam has you in song. Don't worry about it. He's covering you tonight. But Adam, you are such an amazing guy. Can you tell the people where they can find you? Yes. So you guys can find me on all social media platforms. The, at least the three big ones that I used, which would be Instagram at Adam, A-D-D dot A-M underscore official on Instagram. You can type the exact same thing on Twitter. But once again, that's Adam, A-D-D dot A-M underscore official. Uh, this is, I think the one on Facebook, my Facebook fan page, the T-H-E real R-E-A-L. Adam, A-D-D-A-M. There's no dot for that one because I couldn't do it on, on uh, Facebook. Wouldn't let me. Yeah, so those are the, those are the three platforms uh, that you can find me on um, that I actually use. So, And then if you want to see constant updates, you can get them on Instagram because I'll be on there all the time because, you know, that's where a lot of people, at least artists, like to be on. Yeah, Instagram is the spot, man. That is the best place to be on, especially for artists and fans of artists. So if you're looking to tap into Adam, make sure you go check in A-D-D -D dot A-M underscore official and he'll pop right up. But of course, if you want to look him up on the music sites like Spotify and stuff like that, you just type in A-D-D -D dot A-M and he will pop right up. But yo, man. Yes. Adam, it's been an amazing experience talking to you here, man. It's been wonderful having you here on my show. I'm honored, dude. I'm humbled that you decided to pick this time to come to Let's Chat and Jam. You are a dope dude, man. Really are dope. And I'm, I'm really telling the people they need to tap, tap into you because you are one of a kind. And you're going to be here for the long haul. I say that because the way you sing to people, you are not going anywhere, bro. You are not. Matter of fact, people are going to tap into you and say, hey, Adam, can you sing to me? Can you sing to me? You're going to get booked at weddings. You're going to get booked on stages. You're going to get booked everywhere. And as far as Grammys, oh, yes. I see some coming your way, my friend. I see some coming your way. And as far as other awards like the 
BT Awards? Oh, yes. I see that in your future, too, Adam. I see everything in your future because you are dope, period. Thank you for coming through, Adam. I do appreciate it. It's been a win-win-win situation, man. And since you've been here for the first time, you have now become part of the Let's Chat and Jam fam, which means you don't have to wait for me to tap into you and say, hey, Adam, why don't you come to my show? Ah, You can tap into my DMs and say, hey, MC, I got something to promote, and I want to promote it on your show. And, of course, I'm going to get my calendar. I'm going to lock it in and say, deal, you in the show. Let's go. That's how easy it is to be on my show when you're in the Let's Chat and Jam fan. But thank you for tapping in and tuning in. I do appreciate you stopping by, man. And please be safe out there in in Virginia, man. Be safe, whatever you do. And everybody else? Yes. Cool. And everybody else, y'all be safe. And just remember, if you have a dream, go for your dream. Because only you can stop you. And nothing, and I mean nothing, folks, beats a failure but a try. Peace out, everybody. Peace. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. Also, like and share the content, as well as hit the notification icon so you don't miss any A Conversation With series right here on Let's Chat and Jam.